Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. Today we're having a look at a mod by Andrew Furness and Oliver Davies called Centralia. This caught my eye on ModDB, I was browsing through the uh, Half-Life 2 new releases. And it's, it reminds me a lot of the older Penumbra games by Frictional Games. You may remember the company as their latest title was very popular, it's called Amnesia, The Dark Descent. I'm sure you've seen YouTube videos of people freaking out over it. Well, this should be the place. But they did a, a series called Penumbra be before that, which kind of featured uh, you going down into these dark mines in uh, Greenland somewhere. It was a very, very atmospheric, scary, sort of first-person puzzle game with horror elements. And this mod kind of goes for the same kind of style. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't quite pull it off as well. Uh, so you see here, this is the kind of intro map for it. And um, I noticed almost instantly that there's a lot of um, level of detail pop in with the new models. So you can see here on the trees and uh, on the, some of the fence and grass models and things like that and the rocks. It, they, you know, as you get closer and further away, the level of detail models don't match up properly. So you get a lot of popping in and out, which is a real shame. It really detracted from the atmosphere. And uh, the other thing I really noticed was the um, texture tiling on the on the ground. You can really notice the kind of square tiling of the textures, which is, again, it's a real shame. Kind of detracts from the atmosphere a lot. Uh, aside from that, this is quite a nice looking map. Uh, I think they could have spent a little bit more time on the displacements and whatnot, because it, it can look a bit bare. But right. general composition is just fine. Get into this place? Maybe if I jump onto those rocks, I can get over the wall. The voice acting does need some work, though. <laughs> so the thing I really liked about this time up is the ambience, uh, the sounds mainly, like the, you know the birds and uh, things like that. It's it's quite ominous considering it's like a brightly lit area. It doesn't look too scary, but you know the, the minimalistic music and the birds it sets a nice tone for it. You'll notice here as well on the ground, like the um, the detail sprites on the ground kind of warp when you get close to them. I mean, all Source Engine detail sprites do that, but it's, it seems to be a lot more noticeable here. It's a real shame. Should hopefully help for the things coming up. Ah, the door's all barred up. There must be something nearby to help me get in. So I kind of wanted to have a look around and explore a bit to see if there's anything I could find. Uh, unfortunately, if you if you kind of go off the, the main track that the level wants you to follow, it kind of there's nothing really there to find, unfortunately. Uh, this is another bug in the level that these doors are untextured, glow like this, which is a real shame. Again, it's another atmosphere-breaking thing. There's a lot of new textures and models in the map, and uh, I do like how important objects are kind of highlighted in the environment, like those keys there. It's very nice. It's amazing just how similar to Penumbra the, uh, the atmosphere and the look of the levels are, though. It must have been a definite inspiration for this. So the guy mentioned there that we had to get the generator going. Unfortunately, I, I had it into my head that we'd need to find like a, you know, a gas can or something like that to power it up. But 
really all you need to do is uh, press the button on the wall in there. <laughs> me trying to jump all over this thing and it's, it's for naught unfortunately. You'll see that button on the wall there next to the light and all you have to do is press it. It's not particularly obvious. This thing is going to kill me. We'll just get in it anyway. <laughs> Alright, so now we're in the mines. And this is where it really takes on the... Uh, number of vibe quite heavily in fact and the level design here is it's kind of uh, it, it's certainly functional I mean the displacements are of a decent quality I wouldn't call them amazing and the lighting is just functional there's no real kind of artistic license taken here this is where things start creeping you out a bit as well. But yeah, so the visuals are just kind of... I'll just call them standard. You know, there's nothing really offensive to look at, but nothing really stands out either. It's just kind of very functional. And, uh, you know, after seeing uh, mods like Dear Escher and... Uh, oh, what was that other mod where you could explore these caves and there's all this gold lying around? I forget the name of it, but it was just like an exploration map through these caves. And uh, after seeing maps like that, it, this kind of, you know, it lacks a bit. So yeah, as it's a horror mod, we want to take a closer look at the elements which uh, make it scary. And unfortunately, it tends to um, meander into fairly formulaic horror territory. Sort of scares, things banging on doors. I would have been quite happy with uh, just the uh, tense music and and audio rather than having these supernatural elements thrown at you. It just it kind of feels a bit cheesy with the atmosphere set with the rest of the level. So for instance you've got the again you've got the minimalistic kind of droning music and with the players breathing that you can hear all the time. It creates a really nice atmosphere. And then, for me at least, it was kind of ruined slightly by this kind of cheesy supernatural elements that you see occasionally. I felt it just kind of cheapened the experience somewhat. I always think that the reason um, Penumbra and Amnesia, The Dark Descent, worked so well, it was always what you couldn't see and what you thought was around the corner, not what you actually did see. That's what made the, those things so brilliant. And again here, like you're seeing here, I'm like taking direct control of you to show you something. Just kind of removes you from the experience. It takes you out of that first person, you know, removes you from your character's perspective and it kind of breaks the atmosphere, I think. In Penumbra and uh, Amnesia, I, I believe you're always in first person no matter what. Also helped that in a, I'm not sure if it was in Amnesia, but in a Penumbra it had the most amazing uh, physics interaction system. You can actually grab hold of a physics object with the mouse and you'd actually have, like say it was a wheel that you had to spin, you'd have to actually make a circular motion with the mouse to spin this wheel and you really felt like you were controlling something in the world. It was absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately I've never seen anything like that done with the uh, Source engine. Like, I kind of think that uh, Penumbra is actually ahead of some other engines in that respect with uh, interacting with physics. It was absolutely brilliant when I first played it. <laughs> yeah, that got me. 
this is the other reason I don't like this mod, it's kind of cheap, cheap kills, and I think a lot of horror games do this, which is a real shame. Where, you know, something pops out from behind something and just instantly kills you, and it's like, uh, really? That wasn't scary at all, it just made me jump. I, I like to call it Doom 3 Syndrome. <laughs> something just hiding behind a wall that pops open and jumps out at you, and it's just... It's not scary, it's just a cheap thrill, rather than something that really gets under your skin. I guess the reason I bring it up is because I really felt uh, quite a strong atmosphere in this mod. It's just a lot of um, really annoying things that I disliked about it. That just kind of pulled me out of the experience overall. So we're going to go and explore down here a little bit. So it's got some uh, environmental puzzles here. Like you can see the lod on the rocks popping there as you move closer and further away. Again, it's just another one of those things like them. Um, especially in a horror game, the visuals, visuals and audio are like almost the most important things. I would say it just creates so much atmosphere, and uh, to see kind of visual glitches like that, it really removes you from the experience. Which is a real shame. So I wasn't sure if just walking over the top of this thing would kill me or not, so I was trying to create a nice, neat little bridge. I didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> so I just kind of bodged it in the end. Yeah, there we go. I do like that, seeing the body get dragged away like that. That was quite a nice touch. I mean, I mentioned before I don't like it when things jump out at you, but like when, when just something simple like that happens, like a body gets dragged away and you don't see what does it. It's not something physically attacking you, it's just something strange happening in the environment. Uh, it's quite nice. I also thought it's, it's quite interesting that um, when you put your head underwater, the the music gets distorted along with the audio. Um, you know, I'm I'm not sure that might just be a limitation of the Source Engine's music system, kind of the DSP affecting the music as well as the sound. But I think it actually works quite nicely here. Almost like the music's playing inside your head or something. It's, I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. <laughs> So that isn't working, so we'll try moving that instead. So again, it's just simple little environmental puzzles like this, which serve to break up the uh, break up the pacing a bit. It's quite nice. And that was part one. Unfortunately, it's qu it's quite short. And again, this is only part one, there will be more parts released later on, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I have to say, um, it's a shame that the visuals kind of let down everything else I felt. Like, especially with things like the um, level of detail pop in on most of the models, it was really, really jarring to the whole experience for me. Um, I thought the audio was great. Like, the music and sound were top notch, it really created a nice atmosphere. It's just a shame that the visuals weren't up to the... Uh, the same quality level. And uh, some most of the environment interaction was just kind of on a very linear path. If you kind of went off the beaten track there was nothing really there. Alright, well that's that guys. Let me know what you thought. And uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>